My way has been through stories which have given me as much or more than I've ever given them. As a child, they gave me an escape from a tiny house and a tiny village and a sense of possibility. As a career, they've given me travel and adventure and the chance to meet all of you. So now, in the spirit of that give back, I want to share one last Romanian story with you. And it's my story from this latest conference, and it probably will be in my Christmas card, if not on Facebook before then, and I'm going to share it with you. You meet people in passing at workshops and conferences. They reach out afterwards through email and social media, and you sometimes reach back. They remember you if you have the chance to return, and they rush up to welcome you, and sometimes you remember them. You're always grateful for the moment and glad to see them again, but the contact is inevitably fleeting, and you move on to the next thing and the next because your life is like that. But some of them somehow stick, not always in the moment, but over time. You're never sure why or how. Their persistence, which is somehow generous and not pesky, and which you try to practice and teach, an intriguing question they pose, which you try to practice and teach. Some connection you simply can't explain, which you try to understand and trust and don't always get right. I probably first met Christina Balin in passing at the inaugural Power of Story conference in Bucharest four years ago. Each year since, she has been in the audience, attentive and smiling, but not demanding. She's more like a warm constant I've grown to appreciate we connected through Facebook, time and again. I can't remember how or, you, how or why. And this year when I saw her in her usual place, fifth or sixth row up, a little to the left of center, I was calmed, I walked up the auditorium steps and I gave her a big hi and hug. It's one of those small reunions that make a foreign place seem less foreign. The next morning, the bedside phone in my hotel room rang. Da, I answered in my best Romanian. <laughs> Christina was on the other end. Had she interrupted my sleep? No. Would I be at the hotel for the next 30 minutes? Yes. Could she stop by with something she wanted to give me? You don't have to give me anything, Christina. No, no, no. Did you, do you have room in your luggage? Yes, a little bit. It's a wonder and sometimes a burden when people you barely know give you gifts. It makes you feel obligated. It humbles you. Neither are comfortable feelings, they stretch you, and they remind you of the goodness of most people, which is bigger than any material gift you will ever receive. Twenty minutes later, after a mad dash to brush my teeth and my hair and throw on some hard travel blue jeans, I met Christina in the hotel lobby. She handed me a large gift bag, not an inexpensive thing itself in this world. Turquoise with some flowers on it, and it had a cutout fairy with some sparkly embossed wings on it. And the 3D tape that was attaching it didn't fit everywhere, so the wings were kind of bent, and the fairy looked a little droopy. In my very snooty Western mind, it looked very Eastern European. <laughs> Open it, Christina said. I hope it's okay. I reached inside. There was no extra wrapping, no tissue, just the warm comfort of cotton. I pulled out a deep navy blue sweater, hand knit, in perfect cables and scallops, bead at the neck, broad in the shoulders, cropped at the waist, elbow, sleeve, elbow length sleeves, and six small but sturdy silver buttons down the front. I don't much like clothes, I'm not an easy fit, but this looked like it was made for me. I looked up at Christina with confusion. What is this? I said. My mother, she said. This is what she did. Now she has Alzheimer's and she doesn't remember how to do it. And then Christina continued. And I remember you always wear dark colors. And I hope this is okay. Oh, I said, you remembered my mother. I've told stories about her over the years, as I mentioned to you, where Christina listened to me every year and told about how, in the telling of those stories, I learned so many things. I've told about the lessons I learned from writing my mother's obituary and having old family friends come up after and tell me stories about my parents I never knew myself. About finding the patience to listen to my mother repeat the same story over and over as her memory failed and she remembered less and less of her present life and more and more of her childhood. 
of the patience that you learn to be present and listen and try to be open to what the world teaches you. Yes, Christina said, of course I remember. And then we both cried, and now we have those moments. We have mothers, we have a shared story, and I have a beautiful sweater, a knitted story, to help me remember. Thank you.